Okay, apologies for the interruption, but I'll just kind of like try to pick back up where we left off with a little bit of review. So we have these different worlds that have things in them uh, and the there's individual items and then there's also kind of collections of items which we're calling um, predicates. Uh, and so when we want to refer to different predicates, we talk about different sets of items in these worlds. Uh, and then I was talking as well about uh, reference. So there are, when we try to pick out specific things in any given world, we use referring expressions to pick them out. And the actual thing that we pick out in the world is called the referent. So when I talk about Jupiter, or I talk about the biggest planet in the solar system, I pick out some specific thing out there in space. You can see it right now in the morning sky, right before sun sunrise. Uh, that's Jupiter. Um, but the actual expressions I use are just referring expressions um, rather than uh, the referent themselves. Uh, yeah, so that's reference. Um, to go back to the uh, other kind of setup I was talking about at the beginning of this second half of the lecture, a predicate is a set of reference in some possible world. So in um, this possible world, we have this set of reference, Mars, Earth, Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus. These are all a planet in this particular world. And when I talk about that set of reference, I can uh, refer to it as a predicate's extension. The specific things out there in the world or a possible world that uh, a predicate picks out because a predicate picks out more than one thing. A referring expression, if it's successful, picks out one thing, a referent in a possible world. Okay, uh, so these happen to be what we now know as the planets in our solar system. So this is true of this possible world as well as the one we actually live in as well. All right, so with this framework in place, we have a formula we can use to figure out whether a uh, proposition is true or not. So uh, the formula is a uh, proposition is true if the referent of its subject is contained in the extension of its predicate. So remember, we're breaking our sentences down syntactically into subjects and predicates, the noun phrase and the verb phrase, verb phrase part of that. And then um, we can think of their meaning in terms of the actual things in the world that they pick out, whether that be a specific thing or a set of things, which is a predicate. So we can talk about Pluto. So we have a proposition, Pluto is a planet. Um, the subject's referent is this. Uh, we now know a little bit better what it looks like after that New Horizons spacecraft flew past, flew past it a few years ago. Uh, we also have some pictures of what the other planets look like or the other objects in space. And we find that if we look at that extension or that set of reference, we do not find Pluto in them uh, or in that extension. So uh, Pluto uh, sadly is, uh, saying Pluto is a planet is a false proposition because Pluto is no longer considered a planet. It's just a rock out in space, or you can think of it as a, some people call it a minor planet or what have you. Um, right, so the world has changed a little bit, but this is basically to give you a sense of um, how the formalism works. So uh, there's a set of objects in the world that um, define an extension of a predicate. And then maybe if you refer to something else that referent happens to be in this extension or not, if it's not, you get a false proposition. If it is, it would be a true proposition, right? And again, as well, uh, when I'm talking about um, reference, I'm not talking about the picture of a thing. Uh, I'm talking about the actual thing out in the world. I just can't, it turns out like, transport Pluto down here and stick them in my PowerPoint slides or hold Pluto up for you to see in my kitchen. Um, maybe in some other possible world, but not this one. Okay, so in any possible world, the proposition may have one of two different truth values. So Pluto as a planet may be false, or Pluto as a planet may be true. So truth values are properties of propositions, um, and they're defined by whether they're true or false. And we can calculate a proposition's truth value when we know what its subject refers to and the extension of its predicate in some possible world. Um, so again, I just need to know um, all the collection of things in a world and like how they're related to one another. And then I can figure out whether it, when I say something about that world, it's true or false. Okay, so uh, note that there are some expressions which have no real world referent. There are a lot of these. Um, the real world being just one of many possible worlds. We could talk about things which could possibly be true, but are not actually part of this world. So Santa Claus, 
Uh, hopefully this doesn't come as a shock or surprise to you, but there is no Santa Claus. Um, there's also no Easter Bunny, even though the holiday of Easter is coming up quite soon. Um, Nibiru does not exist. A uni unicorn does not exist. Frodo Baggins does not exist. Only in your fantasies. Uh, the King of the United States. There is no King of the United States, no matter what Trump might think. Um, so the question is, are these meaningless expressions? These do not pick out any particular thing in the world in which we live. But I would not say that these are meaningless expressions because uh, we know what the meaning of all of these expressions happens to be, right? Um, so that leads us to another kind of sense of meaning, which is called sense. So expressions like the president of the United States or potentially the king of the United States have different reference in different possible worlds. Um, so I'll give you some examples of what this would mean for the president of the United States. So 200 years ago, the president of the United States was James Monroe. That's one possible world which no longer exists. 100 years ago, it was Woodrow Wilson. Now it's Donald Trump. You could think of another possible world in which Hillary Clinton won the 2016 election and she would currently be the president of the United States. That's a different possible world, right? Um, so a sense of an expression is a set of its reference in all possible worlds. And we're gonna think of the sense of an expression like this as effectively like its dictionary meaning, the normal way we think of the meaning of an expression, even though we can't look up um, the meaning of a, phrases or sentences in um, a dictionary, uh, that's what it's, the idea is behind it. The sense of an expression is its set of reference in all possible worlds. Yeah, so the textbook refers to the sense of an expression as its intention. And I'm actually gonna go back here for a second and go back to this previous slide. Um, and you can think about what the sense of these expressions are um, because you have to rely on different possible worlds for them to make sense, right? So the king of the United States, there might be another possible world where the United States is a monarchy and there is always a king uh, at the top of the heap. Uh, that just doesn't happen to be the way it is. Um, in the world in which we live. We can think about the possible world of Middle Earth in which uh, a hobbit like, like Frodo Baggins uh, might exist and he goes off and like disposes of a ring somewhere. Uh, or we can think about a world where they're unicorns, where the horses with a solid one single horn, so on and so forth. We know what those possible worlds would be like, uh, but they're just not the actual way the world is that we live in. Okay, so because we have an understanding of what those expressions mean, we have an understanding of their sense, right? Um, we know what those expressions would refer to in all the possible worlds where they might have reference. There, there's a set of possible worlds out there in which there are unicorns. And we know that we, when we talk about unicorns, we talk about those specific animals that look like horses but have one horn, right? Okay, so Expressions like Santa Claus are not meaningless, even though they don't have reference in this particular world um, in the normal way we think about Santa Claus. So the meaning or sense of these expressions is their set of reference in all possible worlds. Um, that means you can talk about Santa Claus because you know what the world would be like if he existed, if there actually was some jolly old dude who lived at the North Pole uh, and made toys for children and then delivered them all on Christmas Eve. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, and we can talk about that. We can come up with whole different stories about Santa Claus, like his various reindeer and whatnot, um, because we can just imagine that that's the one way that the world might possibly be like. That's what Santa Claus means in kind of the normal sense. Okay, so with this framework, we can now make the following claim. The meaning of a proposition is a set of all possible worlds in which that proposition is true. Uh, so I'll go back here again as well, um, a few slides, uh, and talk about a proposition has different truth values. It can be either true or false, um, and it depends on these various aspects of how we describe the world in which the proposition is uttered, so what its subject refers to and the extension of its predicate. Uh, and then I'm going to fast forward again here. So proposition can be either true or false. Those are its different truth values. Um, and when I'm talking about uh, the meaning of a proposition, I'm talking about the set of all possible worlds in which that proposition is true. Um, so another way of saying the same thing is that the meaning of a proposition 
is a set of conditions in which that proposition is true, i.e. it's truth conditions. So at the start of this lecture, I talked about, well, we have the meaning of a word like kitchen. We can just say, well, it's a room in your house where you prepare food, normally with maybe appliances and such. But um, I also talked about there are expressions like I'm sitting in my kitchen, um, which you can't look up the meaning of it in a dictionary, but you would know, normally speaking, whether or not that expression is true or not if I utter it, right? Um, and you know what the world would be like if I am sitting in my kitchen. That happens to be true about this possible world, and there's various conditions that have to apply, like I have to be in this particular spot, I have to be sitting down probably on a chair or something like it, um, and I have to be, you know, in a room in my house where I normally prepare the food because it has all the different appliances and so on and so forth. You know what the world would be like if you said, I am sitting in my kitchen and referring to yourself uh, and what the world, uh, what conditions would have to hold for that um, proposition to be true for yourself, right? It's a slightly different set of conditions than it is for me because you're you and I'm me, so on and so forth. But think about the conditions, everything that has to hold for that to be true. Those are the truth conditions. Uh, that's the meaning of a proposition as opposed to like the meaning of a single word. Right, so when you know the meaning of a proposition, you know those truth conditions under which it has, it, the things that would have to hold for it to be true. Um, so I'm giving you uh, a quote that I found online, um, just kind of to uh, mix things up here a little bit. Uh, so not to go over this too many times, but this is one possible world that a writer has imagined. Uh, it could only be the thought of verdure to come, which prompts us in the autumn to buy these dormant white lumps of vegetable matter covered by brown papery skin, and lovingly to plant them and care for them. It is a marvel to me that under this cover they are laboring unseen at such a rate within, to give us the sudden awesome beauty of spring flowering bulbs. While winter reigns, the earth reposes, but these colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Uh, so this is a writer named C.M. Street. Uh, I don't know much about him or her. Uh, I don't even know. If, yeah that much about them so uh, but they were trying to come up with a um, a world in which this particular phrase which is famous in linguistic circles would have some sort of meaning basically the conditions that would have to apply for this proposition to possibly be true I'm not going to say much more about it than that um, but I will say that the idea that you can compose the meaning of a sentence or produce it from the meaning of its parts is called the principle of compositionality. So again, the parts that we're playing around with here are the subject and the predicate, or you know, the subject noun phrase, and then the main verb phrase of a sentence. Um, so figuring out what the meaning of a sentence is on the basis of that, uh, like the reference th that the subject refers to, and the set of reference that a predicate applies to, that's the principle of compositionality. Um, yeah, so I'll give you another example. Uh, kind of about thinking about the meaning of expressions. Uh, so I can give you an expression like the president of the United States is a white male. And you can tell me, is that true or not? Uh, and if so, how do you know? Or if not, how do you know? What conditions have to apply for this statement to actually be true? Uh, and I'm not going to go into this in detail. Like, I think generally speaking, everybody would say it's true at the moment. Um, a few years ago when Barack Obama was the president, I think most people would say no, but then you have to stop and think about what does it mean to be a white male? What conditions have to hold for these sort of uh, descriptors to apply to the president of the United States? Um, and I can give you another example. Um, I can say Santa Claus is a white male. What do you think? Is that true or is that not true? Um, if you're like me, uh, you might think of Santa Claus as a white male, even though there is no Santa Claus um, in this particular world. He just kind of is a fantasy, but you would know what the world would look like um, if he did exist. Uh, and maybe you have a different image of Santa Claus in your head, um, but either way, if you think of him as a white male, then you think of a specific set of things that have to be true about the world and that particular being in that world um, for him to be described that way accurately, right? Uh, so there's no way to confirm this, that Santa Claus is a white male in this world because Santa Claus doesn't exist. Um, but you know what the conditions would be like if this sentence were true. That's the meaning of the expression. Okay, so propositions can be distinguished on the basis of the kinds of worlds in which they may be true. Um, and this is kind of what the quick write was about. So we have what are called synthetic propositions, which may be true or false, uh, depending on the state of affairs in the world. Um, 
Then we also have analytic propositions, which are always true, no matter what the state of the world. And that just kind of depend, uh, depends more on the meaning of the words than on what the world is doing that they're describing. Um, then you also have contradictions, which are always false, no matter what the state of the world is. So these two are kind of based on just the linguistic meaning or semantics of the uh, expressions involved in the proposition. Uh, and these are kind of flexible enough to uh, apply to some possible worlds and not others. Uh, analytic propositions are sometimes known as tautologies. Uh, I'll point that out as well, but these two kind of find a, uh, form a nice um, contrastive pair with one another. Uh, and this is also what the quick write was about. Um, so in the quick write, there are eight sentences. Some of them are synthetic propositions, some of them are analytic, and some of them are contradictions. Uh, I think I yeah lost my quick write when I restarted my computer. But if you want to go back through your quick write and label them all as these three things, that's fine. Uh, normally, I would walk through them in class uh, and go over them together. Uh, I'll let you do that on your own at home. Um, and I'll just, in the meantime, skip to the last slide of the lecture. Uh, and just wrap all wrap up everything I've said um, so far, just so nothing gets missed. But uh, at one level, we have um, what's called a referent, which is a, an actual thing in the world that an expression can pick out. Like I can talk about my slinky. Don't ask why I have a slinky here, but I do. Um, and when I talk about my slinky, you don't have to see it. Uh, I can just say my slinky, and now you know there's an actual thing um, that happens to be here that that expression picks out. That's it's the referent of that expression. Um, the extension of a, <clears throat> sorry, an extension is a set of reference, uh, which we're also calling a predicate in some possible world. Um, yeah, so, right. Uh, there's a variety of things in the example I used was a planet in this particular world. We know eight planets in our solar system, so on and so forth. When I use that expression, uh, that's the extension of it, all the reference it picks out in this possible world. The sense is what an expression refers to in all possible worlds. So there might be other worlds in which Pluto is a planet or Nibiru is a planet, so on and so forth, Tatooine, whatever. Um, that's the sense of an expression. Uh, truth is um, something that describes a proposition if the referent of its subject is contained in the extension of its predicate. Meaning is the the meaning of a proposition is a set of conditions in which that proposition is true um, in all possible worlds. And we also refer to those as the truth conditions. So when you want to try to define the meaning of some expression, you kind of lay out what the truth conditions are for that expression to be true or that proposition to be true. Uh, I think I've been over this enough times by now, so I'm going to stop here. But as always, you can let me know if you have any questions. And in the next lecture, we'll boil it down from entire propositions and expressions to individual words and talk about how the meaning of individual words uh, works. So I'll see you then.